Well, hey, everybody, welcome to another episode of Church Leadership Lab, where we have conversations that empower healthy churches. Thank you for joining us today with your hosts, Scott and Casey. Hello. Hello. How the are Scott, you, Scott and Casey podcast. That's it. That's like our side project that we should do someday. Oh, yeah. I'm glad we didn't name this <laughs> or this podcast that, though, because it's you know like, why they didn't? Because we are cares? replaceable. <laughs> <laughs> Because someday, what if where they're like, you guys really should not be doing this? They replace us. They would have to find another Scott and Casey or rename the show. So it would make it it would make it more more difficult. It I was would. thinking because people are like, who are they? Who Who's why, why would people? I listen to a podcast with that? <laughs> yeah. They should they should pay attention. I know, I know. Well, today we um, man, we get to have a conversation uh, with Robert Blair talking about all things generosity in the church and what does it look like to use technology for that? Um, talk through a, a report that we were a part of. We're, we're super excited. Uh, now, Robert is a veteran of the online payments world uh, with his experience spanning uh, decades in both the financial services and the tech industry. Uh, he now serves as the executive vice president of payments here at Ministry Brands, where he uses his expertise to help develop the best online giving tools of available to help churches grow in generosity. Robert, but what's something that doesn't make the public bio that all your friends and family would know about you? Well, that I'm I'm very passionate person in like all aspects of my life, whether it's fatherhood or sports or relationships or my faith, I it's you know very very passionate person and so you don't really get that on a paper. I think yeah. maybe you get it on the podcast, but you know, <laughs> uh, hopefully not too much. But uh, yeah, it's I'm I'm super passionate. Yeah, so you're like all or nothing is well, what I'm well, hearing. I kind tr- of it sound the best, but yeah, that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> No, that that's great. I love that. I love, I love, um, yeah, I love approaching things with passion and, and that's, I mean, we're, we're passionate about obviously what we all get to do in, in helping empower healthy churches and using technology. And, um, so I, I'd love to kind of jump in, you know, we recently released the state of church giving 2024 report, uh, in partnership with the parable group. And we'd just love to hear from you a little bit. What was kind of the motivation, kind of the big picture for, or examining the data, looking at trends, and, and providing this report. Well, I, to me, it's it's important that we have lots of sources of information as we're we're really focused on helping build healthy churches. And it's not just what the data might say in this system or that system. But we also went out and polled and talked to to people that that live it every day in the church. And then we use the report to help connect those dots, right? And the other part that, that was important to us was that it was scientific, right? It's not opinion, right? This is very much a uh, a very scientific from a statistical and from a uh, the way we went about it because we, we don't want to draw the raw conclusions. We don't want to draw a conclusion that might lead us or lead our clients and the churches to do something that maybe isn't in in the in the best interest of growing the church, and so to me, that's that was a big part of it. Yeah, Perfect. absolutely. Um, Robert, within the report, let's. I think there's a lot of negative assumptions. You know, churches are declining, giving is down. But let's talk about the other side of that. The, the churches that are growing, that are seeing generosity improve. From within the report, are there common denominators or themes that we're seeing? among the churches that are growing in generosity? Well, I, I think there's a, a couple things that, that from the from our experience as well as from the report that that I, I would conclude is that it is an important aspect of the church in the sense of it needs a focus. But it, I know it's easy to, to, to be able to think that the congregants will be moved by the Holy Spirit, that will be moved in a way that to give. But I think there's more to it than that. There's a lot of competition for the mind share and the wallet share of the congregant. And and I believe in in people's hearts, they absolutely positively want to get to the church. But I think there's a bit more to it in terms of what they can do in the church to help the congregant connect to the needs of the church and to Casey, to your point, around generosity and 
and that the church needs to be part of our thinking from each um, for each congregate. Yeah. You know, my, my church is in the middle of a capital campaign and as my profession, you know, I'm sitting back and like, can't wait to see how we communicate this. And I just, I have to give them so much credit. They have communicated so well and so clearly and so often and so specifically, it's not just this, we're going to, you know, build a new building or expand. It is so specific kind of exactly to your point, focused is the word. And and from the minute we talked about or kind of launched it, addressed, a lot of you have probably sat in a congregation and had a horrible experience with your church asking you for money. Let's try to do all of this right from day one. So like really kind of leaned into all the reasons why people might feel icky, but then have been so laser focused every single week. So um, I love what you just said, and I'm kind of seeing that in, in my own community every single weekend. And the capital campaign is an event, typically, for a sure. yeah, reason. Yeah. When I think <laughs> about giving in the church and, and kind of what we saw in the report was that it's that type of focus and those practices that really work well for the church on an ongoing basis. Mm. Right, right. Yeah, so kind of kind of taking that because obviously a, a campaign of that nature and size right. gets a lot of energy behind right. it, and there's a lot of intentionality. You know, you're not just standing up and saying, "Hey, we think we want a building. If you want to give to it, that's well, great." You know, there's there's yeah. some real energy behind it, and so I do think that's really helpful, Robert. Just the the you know highlighting the fact that you can take that same idea and putting energy towards it and do that in a way where it can be ongoing and where people can see, hey, here's what the investment in the mission of the church, right. here's here's where it's going, what it's doing. Um, I was a part of a, a church plant a, a while ago, and we actually broke down the like, here's how much a pot of coffee costs. Yeah. Everybody. It, you know, it's real. It's important. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and just helping people understand that because it's not that people don't care, but oftentimes like when I walk oh, yeah. into a store, you know, I'm not wondering, geez, how much is Target paying right. for the electrical <laughs> bill? Right. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just not on our minds. And so bringing that to people's minds, I think, can be really helpful. And one of the things that we've found in talking with clients and with in, even in the survey, some of the work we've done there is that the younger generations are a more um, maybe savvy giver and they give mm -hmm. lots of different causes. And so it's back to the point I made a little bit earlier, there's competition for that wallet yeah. of the Congress. So it's important for the church to outline what are the reasons, where is the money going and reminded of, you're right. A pot of coffee is not, you know, cheap, but it's everything. And it's not just mm -hmm. the operating part of the church. It's what are they, what is the church looking to do from our outreach to the community? The mission right. work, you know, the, the, to, to nurture the members. And the, so that there's yeah. so much to a church that really is unseen unless you're like working there every day. And so I think just being transparent about that in a way that allows yeah. people to go, Oh, I didn't think about that. I don't think about that when I come to church or when I'm in my small group. Yeah. 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 You know, you mentioned um, a little bit of like the both the wallet share, but then also just the attention share. And I, I think that's really wise. There's so many <clears throat> things pulling for our attention just as we live our lives, you know, only increased with smartphones, with social media, all of that. Um, and so I think there are some of those barriers that, you know, church leaders that people in the church kind of experience um, when it comes to especially digital giving. Um, and so I know that the top two barriers in the report were lack of familiarity with technology. Um, so just not necessarily maybe understanding it, but also, you know, security concerns around online transactions. So as you think of those, given, I mean, you spent so many years in uh, in the financial services and technology, just in this world, um, what advice would you give to church leaders and how to overcome those barriers? Well, you know, I, I think it's a great question, Scott. As I, as I think about it, when we go shopping at Amazon, we don't really ask that question, right? Yeah. And, and uh, Target or whatever your favorite dot com or, or whatever you're clicking on. And... You know, I, I think 
from a security and from a, a robustness related to the money movement and what's underside and the fear factor, I think the church needs to be able to articulate it's it's the way that the that we do business in our society today. And the church is no different. The church is not a business, but there are aspects of a business there that and and providers like us at ministry brands are very focused on those things. And they should really lean on us for that in terms of ensuring that we're secure and ensuring that this all works properly. But it is important, right? And I think on the other side of that coin, in because you asked about digital. But actually, what's less safe, now this is me talking as a longtime banker and payments person, checks are less <laughs> safe. Cash yeah. is less safe. Um, and they don't like to think about it that way in the church context, but it's true, right? What we know is that the, yeah. it's it, not only is it more expensive to handle, uh, but it's also, it, it's open to fraud and other things that I think is important to, to keep in mind. It's so secure on the digital side. I think that's something to just to always keep front and center. Yeah. Well, I think too the um, you know the the availability of online transactions for everything. At the moment, I can't think of something that I pay <laughs> physically. Um, in fact, every you know every once in a while, actually, I think. Um, I had to do something with a passport not, uh, not too long ago and it required a check. And I was like <laughs> to my wife, I'm like, where, where is our checkbook? And she's like, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> and, you know, and, and so it's so common, but I think that that also highlights why it's important for churches to have, have a, have something in place to where that is a smooth process for people. Because like you, you mentioned Amazon, it takes one or two clicks and, is going to be at my door in 30 minutes, you know? Um, and so I think that's really important to, to just kind of elaborate on if you could. I, you know, I, you, you can tell I'm excited about this this part. Of, I love but it. It's, I believe as part of my role at Minister Brands, I'm responsible for giving and the payments stuff underneath, but the giving part. And I really believe philosophically when you're so moved to give, yeah. you need to be able to do it. Because you're so mm. accustomed to doing that in the rest of your life. Oh, I need this Instacart. Oh, I need this Amazon. Or maybe not need, but I want. <laughs> <laughs> but but ultimately, let's as as the church and and as companies like us that that support churches, it needs to be easy. Easy to use, yeah. easy to give. Mm. And it it's and as we saw in the report as well, there's also some best practices at the moment of giving. Right. Mm -hmm. And we talked a minute ago about the what's the money going towards and the reminder of that. But it's also the it's it's a whole ecosystem in my mm -hmm. mind, just like in the worship process, the giving process needs to be as comprehensive as possible. And I, I'm curious if you just just kind of your observations uh, in that process if you had to make kind of a generalization, where do most churches maybe drop the ball? Is it in the initial access to the technology? Is it the follow-up? Is it the, you know, actual digital form that's being used? I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Well, actually you're hitting on them exactly, Scott. So um, maybe there's some, <laughs> some, some time or some work we can do in payments with you. <laughs> but no, it is, it is, um, you know, we talked a little bit about the, What's the funding going for? People want to know that, but there's also the form. There's there's um, there's a science to the form mm -hmm. and people giving and buying. And I, yeah. again, and it's uh, I'll I'll exaggerate a little bit for effect here, but you know, is the button in the right place? Is it the right color? The right size? Does it have the right words? Um, it seems like a nuance, but it's really important because remember. We're competing again. I'm going to keep keep hitting that point, right? We're really competing, and we're the expectation of commerce in the church yeah. is the same as it is for commerce outside. And so you have to be as good or better than the others. Yeah, i I like that you're going into this, Robert, because in in the church space, I think sometimes we hesitate to have these conversations as openly as I think we can and should. Um, my background is nonprofit. And that's raising a lot of money 
for a very, very good reason. But if I don't do a good job of explaining why I actually need your money, then that's on me. I, I know Scott's, I think, heard me make this analogy before. It's kind of cheesy, but I know what's broken in my house. So I know from, from my salary, what I need to budget for repairs or investment or growth. My church is the same. But if my staff doesn't help me understand, here's where we need your investment. That's kind of on them for not helping me understand what's important. But then I think I love that you're talking about even like the color of the button, right? There is human psychology that we can learn from marketing and advertising. Certain colors evoke certain human responses. Is there a technological, what I call barrier to generosity? Mm. Did it take too many clicks and I got bored or distracted? All of these things are conversations that we would absolutely have if we were in big commerce and we can and should be having it in the church because we are competing Um, not out of a sense of greed, but out of a sense of growing the kingdom and giving to a mission, we can have those conversations. I I love that you're kind of going there. Even the color of the button, don't use red. (laughs) Red makes people angry. (laughs) I was was putting together some materials uh, the other day and talking about this, Casey, and and Mm -hmm. I used the word checkout. Because that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a merchant commerce thing that I'm giving you. Yeah, exactly. at the, that's what you're doing. You're going through and you're saying, I want yeah. to give. And, you know, we could we could have a whole podcast on what am I receiving from the church, yeah. right? That's that's an, another day. But I but I but I <laughs> like the process of thinking about ensuring that the flows and that mm-hmm. the the advice and the capabilities that we're giving the churches are all there mm-hmm. so they can do optimally. But it also has to be yeah. unique to each church. And that's where mm-hmm. um there's no one, one form fits all. And it, again, it's back to the stores. Every website is a little bit different. So we want the personality mm-hmm. of the church. We want the spirit of the church to come through in their, with their congregation. And so, Scott, you mentioned a minute ago about the website. So mm-hmm. the journey to get to the giving part is also very important, right? Having a mm-hmm. robust website and being able to uh, know when events are and looking in the directory. I mean, there's a lot of great stuff there. Um, following up on sermons, all the things that you you really want to use the website for. Not And then it's time to give. You can do that on the website. Then you can do it on your phone. You can text. There's lots of different ways to do that. Mm-hmm. But also, Scott, you, you said it. I want to re- reemphasize it here for, for our audience today. It's the follow-up. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. This is yeah. very generous. We appreciate it. We're going to put it to good use. Remind them again. Remind the the, yeah. the, the, the donor, this is what we're doing. And thank you. And we look forward to serving you as we go forward in life. Yeah. Yeah. Impact is huge. And acknowledging that gift, you, you can't not acknowledge. Or you just told me that my gift wasn't important, so you don't need it again. Yeah. Um, well, Robert, let's talk about the impact of this report. Like, this it was a, a big... Uh, effort on our part with Parable Group. So the goal of everything that we do is to create tools to empower healthy churches. So how will the results of this study impact how we invest in digital moving forward? Well, I think it helps helps inform our decisions. Um, Mm -hmm. It also helps us guide our churches, Casey, to the point you you were just making and being able to be that strategic advisor on topics like this, because it is complicated. It can be at least. And so I think the report brings a level of credibility. It also helps check us, right? I guess I mentioned it's important for us to have a a more open-minded view in terms of what are all aspects Mm -hmm. of this to make sure we are doing the things that are necessary in order to provide the best possible tools and capabilities for our church clients. Yeah. Well, and I, I love that because, you know, actually I was just in, in a room with uh, a handful of our, uh, you know, church leaders that we get to serve. And <clears throat> one of the main motivations for that is but, we don't want to build tools for something that you don't need and that's not yeah. going to help your church and your ministry. And so understanding both, you know, hearing from from church leaders themselves, but also looking at the data and understanding, you know, it like you mentioned through a scientific approach, I think is so important then to, to stay on the right trajectory so we don't end up in a place where it's like, look at this fancy thing and they're like, that's not helpful. That nobody <laughs> you know? wants or needs. Exactly right. <laughs> well, and it's all good yeah. to be to have validation. 
right? And, and, and yeah. you know, while we're, we're important to the churches that we serve, it's good to have additional opinions and, and to show them that we are doing the hard work to, to ensure that we are providing uh, the right capabilities, the right thought leadership. And ultimately, it's up to the, the church leadership and the church themselves to, to be able to make these decisions and do it. And our, our role is to really help and facilitate it based off their leadership. Yeah. And you know, I'm, I'm familiar with the yeah. meeting you were talking about. Each church was different in that room. And, and very yeah. different philosophies with very different backgrounds. And so understanding that there are some commonalities here as it relates to giving and generosity, but there yeah. is also a lot of uniqueness. Yeah, yeah. Well, this this podcast, the whole kind of goal of it is conversations that help empower healthy churches. So we always love to ask uh, our guests the question, in your opinion, what is one essential component of a healthy church? Oh, wow. Um, well, I'm, I'm going to need more time, maybe. I, actually, uh, the essential part is that it's it's based in the, in, in the Bible, but yet we don't ignore what God is sending to us and other means and yeah. that, mm. that we, we take all the information that is provided and we yeah. let the spirit move us in a way that allows us to, to do God's work. And so I think that healthy yeah. church is that combination of both. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Ground, grounded in the scriptures, but open to the Absolutely. spirit. That's a great, good yeah. that was good. Yeah, you should have put it back Ooh. to me. Yeah, that's what I didn't. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey. Just saying, a lot of years in ministry writing, you know, whether it's sermons or uh, things to, to, awesome, to sum up. So, <laughs> if you had been um, preaching right now, you would have said I, that and then paused for effect and then said it again. <laughs> I know, yeah. dang, that was that was good. <laughs> yeah, well. I'd love Robert. This has been so helpful, um, and and I think there's a lot of good stuff for church leaders to to take away. Now we we are going to jump into our last section. Mm -hmm. We call it our final five rapid fire. Coming at you quick. Um, first one is what is one book that you'd recommend to church leaders? Oh wow, Scott, that's a that's a great question. I um, mean. I don't know, Scott. I'd have to think about that some more. All right, we're we we can we can uh, we can put it in the show notes, but you can uh, obviously we mentioned the Bible, so that's well, a good one. I was going to say that, but I thought it was too coordinate, right? Of course. No, I don't think we'll anyone said it. that yet. Actually, on the show, so not a single person oh, has said the Bible. Well, let's, <laughs> let's let's take it from the from the point there, Scott. Let's do that. Perfect. I like All it. Right. Yeah, All right, we'll Robert. Go, we'll go with the scriptures. Number two, be honest. What is the last thing that you listened to, like on Spotify or Apple or whatever you listen to your music on? Well, I, I I'm a bit older. You can see from the grays here. Um, so I, it was '80s music, early '80s music. <laughs> I accept I it. it all day long. Yep. I love it. What uh, so third one? What is your favorite piece of technology? And the only rule we have is you can't see your right. phone because that's often the answer. Well, I love my Apple TV. You know, I use it as a mm. platform to for all my entertainment and have it integrated across my phone and other things in the house. <laughs> I, I, yep. I've, I've recently been able to connect the Apple TV and Siri to other components of my home so I can talk to my house. I like that. I love Isn't it. Isn't that fun? I love when I, but when I accidentally say something and then all the things respond, I'm like, I wasn't, that's sorry. I wasn't, but it's, yeah, I love exactly. it. Um, all right. Number four, is there a quote, some nugget of wisdom that has just really stuck with you throughout the years? Um, words matter. Mm. And I think it's, it's in the, so many contexts. It's been, it's been something I, I, I have in my life, but uh, we talked about it from a church perspective. It's it's hearing those words and it's ensuring that that we're reading between the words at times, but that we're saying what we mean and we're doing it. Yeah, that's good. All right, last one. Uh, this is kind of an open one for you, but w one thing that you'd like to communicate to our audience of church leaders. You know, we're 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 here to serve, right? I, I love mm -hmm. the, that you used those words earlier, both of you actually, and that's, it's really a, a big part of who we are. 
and that we're working really hard to be really smart about how we provide those services and that. And so, you know, we, we're coming from the heart and from the spirit, and but we're bringing our expertise from the from the the world out there and then in commerce and the like. And so, um, we're here to 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 serve. Yeah. Well, I love that. That's that's a great note to end on. And yeah, we just so appreciate um, not only the work you know that you and the team have put into this report, but also just mm -hmm. the conversation today, unpacking some things, diving into some other things. You know, all centered around how can the church grow in generosity? Mm -hmm. uh, how can we help disciples grow in generosity? And how can you know we continue to grow in health? So, man, we so appreciate your time, and thank you to those of you watching or listening to this. We hope that it's been helpful for you. Uh, if it has, we'd love for you to share it with somebody, whether you send them a link, uh, subscribe, leave a comment, a review, all those things are so helpful for us to continue to help more church leaders. So we'd encourage you to do that. We're grateful for your time today and we'll see you next time. This episode of the Church Leadership Lab podcast is brought to you by Ministry Brands, the largest provider of church technology software. Over 90,000 churches rely on ministry brands for their single platform solution that brings together all the digital tools a church needs. From online giving to websites to church management software and more, Ministry Brands is leading the way in simple to use, innovative solutions, all with the goal of empowering healthy churches. To learn more, visit ministrybrands.com.